when the three of us were discussing what are we going to do about the last talk, we had to work out, right, we've had all these talks that goes over org level, industry level stuff, and yes, our speakers did a very, would have done a very good job at holding it down to what can you do as an individual? What does the path work? How does that, how, does you, how do you fit in to culture and how do you influence it or how, does it, how might it impact you? We realized we needed to look for a talk that is a bit closer to an individual, your personal growth, a story. And that is what Mirno is actually going to offer for us today. So please welcome to the stage, the engineering manager at BNZ, Mirno. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So the last talk from Jenny was amazing. Um, Dora metrics is something which a few of us have been playing around a lot at our workplaces as well. And I have so many questions for you, so many that I would want to use a, a dedicated conversation with you after this. Um, the talk was so good that I have completely forgotten what I have to talk about. So uh, <laughs> if, I, if I get stuck, uh, please excuse me and you can blame it on Jenny. Um, so um, when I look around this room, it also reminds me of my school days in India. Like I see the front rows by and large empty. Uh, I, I, I see the breaks and the, when people pile into the room, it's like a cacophony of sounds and then Prey comes and claps her hands and basically tells us all to shut up and then we do. So um, yeah, thanks for reminding me of home. Uh, last talk of the day uh, and then it was great talks today. I learned quite a lot of things. When I look around this room, there are quite a few people. So a, a quick check, like, you know, trying to guess the number of people who registered for this conference. Uh, how many think that it is more than 150? Okay, let's say one, 150 to 200. How many feel 150 to 200? Okay, how many feel 200 to 250? Okay, how many feel it's 250 to 300? Okay, 300 to 350? One hand. Okay, 350 to 400? No. Okay, so what's the right answer? I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, was, I was just hoping to have you all exercise your hands a bit after the heavy lunch. Uh, those mushroom things were really good, by the way. Anyway, so today we talked about leadership. So when we talk about leadership, it's mostly around um, the, when we look at that word, it's something always to do with people. Um, having said that, at the very onset, I would want to caveat it with the fact that, well, there is a possibility of being a thought leader in your own aspect. It's absolutely fine to not even have leadership as aspirations. It's okay to be in a position wherein I am leading as an individual contributor. I'm creating designs, creating patterns, inspiring people to do some good things. So it's so, so please don't take it as a fact that I am pushing people to move towards leadership. It's absolutely fine to be not one. Whatever drives you, whatever gives you that sense of fulfillment, that's what matters. However, for the duration of the stock, I would be focusing on the more traditional aspects of leadership, which invariably has something to do with people. So, um, with some of the other conference talks I've done in the past, I have this reputation of sorts of coming onto the stage and tearing my stomach open and talking about some of the bad things which I've done. Um, I think that's a way to show the fact that we are all humans, we all do strange things, we have our motivations for doing things, but then perhaps you could learn from me and not repeat those same mistakes. So the story is some years back, uh, thanks to a restructure in our organization, uh, there was a leadership role which opened up. I used to be a dev at that point of time. And that role was basically handed to me on a plate. I was told that, hey, Mernal, you seem to be good enough. Go for it, if you so prefer. I had my motivations for the role. Some of them were very standard, like, well, it came up with a salary hike. It gave me a, 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 a role, a designation, which was quite good. It soothed my ego. Both these points worked quite well. I was like, yeah, why not? So once I went in for that role, 
uh, my understanding or my expectations for the role were something around the fact that, well, I was doing well in my last role. So if I was doing well, clearly the expectation is for me to continue to do the same thing. So I need to perhaps play that same role, perhaps a bit more better. Ah, and with that expectation set, I went in for those roles. Bad mistake. Ah, and and the, then the problem started manifesting within a few months, wherein you, I was looking at two or three teams. I was thinking I was doing a good job. So I, I remember writing a test suite on my own, and I said that, hey, teams, this is the fun stuff which you need to use. Start using it. Ah, pretty soon, I realized that I'm right in the middle of the delivery path of two or three teams. Right? People were expecting things of me. People were not taking that ownership on their own to do things. And I was like spending quite a lot of time trying to fix mistakes, made mistakes of my own, was losing my own credibility, and of course, getting burnt out. In the panel discussion today, there was a discussion, I think Rahul raised the point around the fact that there was an expectation to be right all the time. And you know, I, I didn't really prepare for it, but then that thing, it stuck a chord, and I, I thought that, yes, that was something which was playing on as well. That I was always under the impression that I am the most smartest guy in this room, and I need to be that person coming in and make the right decisions, always. Right? So that burnout aspect was starting to trouble, and I realized pretty soon that this is not working out, so either I leave, or I look for another role somewhere, or perhaps go back to my last role. And that's when I started working with a mentor. Now, that person was someone who I, um, I, I sort of respected. He worked at the same place where I did, a person who inspired me. For that matter, he's actually sitting in the same room. And I, haven't, I, don't, I don't have his consent to talk about his name. But then I basically had a chat with him, had, had, had lunch, basically talked about politics, life, cricket. And we also talked about what's going on in my life at my workplace, right? And that's when he started talking, and he started scribbling on a piece of paper, which I'm trying to reproduce as part of this drawing. Sorry for a pretty rough looking drawing, but this is the best I could manage. My skills on uh, PowerPoint is really bad. Um, so, so the thing is basically, even, even though it's quite ugly, and, the, and it looks even more uglier when I see it on this big screen, um, <laughs> Let me see if this mouse pointer works. Yep, there, there it is. There it is-ish. But um, let's say that we are here starting from somewhere here. And we have multiple ways to move up. We can move towards a tech leadership role. We can move towards architecture, product. That's how I write P, by the way. Uh, we can move towards engineering leadership. Or you could go towards any other area. You could go towards sales, advertising, creative arts. There are lots of areas where you could move into. But more traditionally, these are some of the standard things which we as technologists move towards. And there are ways to move to those areas. You could move straight up, or you could move laterally along. You could go down once in a while. I used to have a manager who went right up to the head of tech roles and then decided that, well, he wanted a bit of peace of mind and went back to being a developer. Some of the folks in this room would actually know him. And, and, and yes, it's absolutely fine, whatever gives you that sense of fulfillment, going, going back to that first point. Anyways, so wherever we go in this chart, we go up, down, sideways, there are certain things which change. And some of those things are, the first thing is the diversity aspect which comes in. So when we say diversity, we talk about diversity of thought, diversity of the type of roles you are working in, diversity of the type of source codes which you have to deal with, one day you are working with mainframes, the other day you are working with Java, the other day you are working with .NET. You are looking and talking to people with different skill sets. right? The scope increases. At some level, you are looking at one or two code repos. Down the line, you may look at full, at least five or six repos. You are, looking, you are working with clients. You are working with vendors. right? Um, one thing which we need to be mindful of is that the more higher you go, there is a high potential that you would be less and less time. You would spend less and less time on the tools. Be mindful of this aspect. A lot of us, me included, went for these type or go for these type of roles thinking that we would continue being on the tools. Trust me, it becomes difficult after a while. Some people are lucky. Some people have that privilege to still be on the tools and have that sense of fulfillment. If that is what drives you, 
many of us aren't and have seen people struggle. It is a real struggle out there, right? So I just thought that I'll use this talk to remind people that if you aspire to move for some of these leadership roles, bear in mind some of these things. The other thing is around weaknesses and biases. Uh, the more higher you go, there is always a possibility of your weaknesses and biases being ruthlessly exposed. You can still, you know, hide it in some way or form at a, at a lower level. The higher you go, at the most critical junctions, you would notice that some of those things are being called out quite often. The other aspect is also around relationships. The big one is around relationships. Everything, everything with a capital E works on relationships, at least in my experience. We can leverage our relationships to try and sort out problems. We can leverage our, our relationships to, to try and collaborate on problems together. A, a, a difficult conversation can be done in a much better way if you have that relationship going on with people with whom you are talking. The aspect of difficult conversations comes in as well. The higher you go, the more, the, I mean, the, the, the frequency of those difficult conversations. When I say difficult, I mean awkward conversations, tough conversations, conversations you don't really want to do. Those things start coming up as well. There is no hiding from it. You can say that, well, I'm a nice, charming guy. I can manage my way through it. It does not work like that. There, you will end up in a situation wherein, on a pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis, you will have to have those awkward conversations. My mentor also reminded me that when we talk about um, leadership, he reminded me that have a look at your job description. The job description on the first line said that your role is to build teams or to empower teams. And the question to me was that, hey, Mrinal, are you going in and building teams or are you doing the work for those teams? And that to me was an aha moment. Like so far, me, I don't know about all of you, I looked at the job description. I was like, yeah, right, whatever. People just go on writing some of these things. But then that job description has a lot of things in it. So it is, it, is, it is important that you look through that description and be familiar with what is being expected of the role. We talked in this conference a lot about safety. And this is something which uh, I, I feel quite passionate about as well, around from a team standpoint. Like, People out here, when you were kids, your, your, some adult in your family tried to help you ride a bicycle. So this is normally the scene which happens. You, 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 take, a, you take your kid on the bicycle, you push it along, along for a while. Um, and you know, after some time, the kid is fine, cycling away, and within 10 seconds, there's a crash. Right? So, and it's fine to crash. It's OK to crash. If that's what it takes for us to learn, it's absolutely fine to crash. As a parent, as an adult, our role is to try and provide that safety. That helmet, that's important. That is our role. We need to be able to provide that helmet. We need to be able to provide safety. When we talk about, as part of our day-to-day -day role, we are doing a lot of these type of things, perhaps not even knowing it. Pair programming is a good way of doing, of having that safety in teams. Peer reviews is another one. Test-driven development, a few of us talked about it in this conference. That's another way to provide that safety for teams. That here is a test case, go ahead, try to create it. It will not move past that pipeline if that test fails, right? So that's the way we are providing safety. So basically what we are, we are already doing some of these things, perhaps we need to be a bit more mindful that why are we doing some of these things if we need to aspire to move towards some of these leadership roles. The other metaphor which comes to my mind is as a leader, I believe that a lot of our roles is like being a party organizer. We invite the right people to the, con to the party. We make the right connections. We introduce people to each other. We ensure there is enough food and beverages for people. And of course, we throw the drunks out. <laughs> Likewise, you know, when, when we're looking at a team, uh, we are looking at inviting the right people, like recruiting the right team. We talked about building a diverse team. I loved Katrina's talk this morning, wherein she talked about diversity, and that's something which is close to my heart. So thanks, Katrina, for calling it out. Uh, making the right connections is around, like, I confess, a lot of my role is being the communication hub. That, hey, team, your test strategy document, which you have written, is amazing. That could be used by some other team out there. 
that pipeline which you have written, can you make it a bit more robust so that it could be used across the organization? Right? So that sort of work is something which a leader is expected to do pretty much all the time. And that is where your networks, your relationships come in handy. And so there's enough food and beverages. As a leader, you would always have people who may be reporting to you or who are people who are genuinely inspired by you. It is your role to ensure that they have some good, fulfilling work. They are happy. You care for them. You genuinely care for them. And lastly, there are difficult conversations which needs to happen. There is no shying away from it. When I say throw the drunks out, that doesn't really necessarily mean you hold them by their collar and throw them out. But at least there needs to be some accountability if there is bad behavior. Fine. So these are some of the lessons we, uh, or some of, some of the lessons which I learned thanks to that conversation with the mentor. The way I implemented some of those things, I could talk about it, but then again, it's contextual. Some things may work for you, some things may not. So please take it with a grain of salt. These are things which worked for me. I would urge you to look at the broader pattern and figure out ways in which you could help move in that direction. The first thing is around a mentor. Try and grab a mentor, identify one. If you had to take one thing out of the stock, I would urge you to take this point. If you have those chats with this mentor, that, that mentor could potentially help you try and identify some of the areas you would need to improve on or fix, right? Uh, a question which comes to me is that, how do we go around identifying who a mentor is? And my one point answer would be like, look for someone who genuinely inspires you. Look for someone who has played that role before, who has credibility, who has experience. There is, you know, there is limited amount of success you could have talking to a mentor who is like, who's, who's, who's perhaps speculating on what the role is all about. Look for someone who has played that role before. Remember that drawing which I drew up in the, in the last few slides back? Those leadership roles where you could go, there are roles which people have already played before. So you don't need to be the pioneer to go there and try and create what that role looks like. There are people who have played it. So go ahead, talk to them. Use these mentoring meetings for feedback. Ask, I mean, I mean, and take that feedback with a pinch of salt as well. Just because a person feels that this is something wrong or something which could be improved, that doesn't always necessarily mean it's true. Be, be rational about it. Talk to a few other people. Try and see whether, whether you hear an echo about it from others. And come prepared. I, I believe it is quite, it is a mark of respect if you respect that time and be mindful of the time of your mentor. So come prepared with it. Like these are the things which I want to talk about. I mean, some of the things which I want to try, some of the things which worked for me, some of the things which failed, oh, and basically use him or her as a bouncing board, as a, as a, as a bouncing board for your thoughts. Nothing is as, as uh, boring or as useless as having a dawdling conversation with a person who you really trust and aspire and, and be inspired with. So remember that drawing which we talked about earlier, the scope was widening. Uh, and what can we do at our end to prepare ourselves for that widening scope? So, I have the slides not moving, but uh, I could do with some help, my friend. Um, in the meanwhile, so when we talk about scope, one of the first things, and it's a, it's a controversial topic, we were talking about it during the breakout here as well, that um, there are vision documents which come from the top management. So it's a vision and strategy document. A lot of them have a lot of words on it. Now, a lot of us, me included, ignore those things. We feel that they are like words, they don't mean anything. People come up with strategies, like a domain in general comes up with a strategy that in this quarter we would focus on X, Y, Z stuff. At least when I was a developer, I, I never really cared for it. I always thought that, well, that's my source code. They are big people, they go on talking about random stuff, who cares, right? If you are looking for leadership roles, my strong advice is to be mindful of some of those, of, of that language. It gives you an indication on where the company is moving, what they are trying to do. What, I mean, I, I, I also hope that in that situation you don't end up, I mean, those things don't change every year so that you are constantly context switching, but then by and large, if you are able to shape your actions, shape the work you do, the shape the words which come out of your mouth in line with that strategy, that vision, it definitely helps. 
The other thing is around being curious. Uh, curiosity, as we there in the slide, there is around who is the customer. A lot of us work on applications which are backend applications. We don't even know who the final customer is. Perhaps we don't even care. And that is the last thing which we need to do. I mean, if you're looking for leadership roles, we need to be mindful, acutely mindful, who our customers are and need to work in that direction. Other things are how are others doing it? Be curious about it. Like, okay, for example, this conference, uh, I work for a bank, and in this conference, there are at least there are three other people from three banks I've spoken to to talk about how did they solve some of the problems which occurred a couple of months back. So this is a sense of curiosity in general that I am doing something. Is there a better way of doing it? How are other people handling the same problem? How can we network more to try and crowdsource some of those problems, understand what are better ways to solve it? Teams, how are teams organized? So there has been a couple of references to these two books uh, in the last few slides. You have stolen my thunder. But then, uh, uh, but yeah, these are two books which are really, really good. Please make it a point to try and read through it. If you are too lazy to read through the entire book, and yes, I agree to, I think Katrina made the point that Accelerate is quite a boring one. But then, uh, you know, there are YouTube uh, book summaries which are available. There are blog posts which are available which explain these books in a nutshell. Please at least be aware about some of these aspects. And use that awareness to try and retrospect on how your teams look like. How are teams organized in your workplaces? How are teams measuring you? And have those conversations. Start probing. Probe and have those conversations. Relationships, uh, again, super, super important point and something which we all need to be mindful of if you're moving towards a relationship, uh, towards a leadership role. While preparing for this presentation, I was speaking to one of my peer engineering managers, Natalie, around, hey, hey, Natalie, how did you go around preparing for a leadership role and how did you work on the relationships? And she gave a beautiful answer. She, I mean, and then I was like, well, I don't think I can ever manage to do it as nicely as you said. So I encouraged her to provide us a video so that she could speak to all of us on my behalf. So let me see if this works. Hello, my name is Natalie Alston and I'm an engineering manager at BNZ. My pronouns are she and her. In my opinion, building healthy and strong relationships in the workplace is one of the most powerful things we can do in our career, regardless of our level. Besides improving overall productivity because we understand each other well, relationships with our colleagues help us grow and learn as individuals. I think of each relationship as some form of informal mentor, even though we might not realise it. Making connections with our peers and leaders will ultimately help us to see different perspectives, open our minds, and more than likely help you in the next step on your career journey. My final comment is my absolute favourite and one that I think about often when I'm reluctant to take that next step. The brave don't live forever, but the cautious don't live at all. Thanks, Natalie. Fair, I don't think I could beat her in uh, how to you know, talk more about relationships and how to sell it. Um, some of the things which I've tried is that my company, my organization allows hot desking, so I move around places, sit at a different location, try to talk to people. Um, I try and solve problems for other teams if I can and try and be of use. Um, one of the things which uh, a friend of mine, who I really admire, talked about some time back when he was having a chat with me, um, I don't think I should name him in this conference, but who cares, Ben Chartnant, who's sitting right there. <laughs> um, so Ben did talk to me about uh, the thing around, uh, well, I took his consent before asking, by the, by the way. Um, so he did impress upon me this aspect of genuinely care for people. That's something which I really, uh, which actually hit me. And I've noticed it time and again that the more I care about people, the more deeper relationships I have within teams and the better bonding I have with my own teams as well. Um, strengths and weaknesses is another thing. There is a school of thought which says that you need to be acutely aware of your weaknesses and biases and start working towards it. Biases, definitely, yes. 
Uh, I also feel that, well, there is an opportunity cost. There are your strengths as well. So do you want to spend that time working on your strengths or do you want to spend that time working on your weaknesses? Again, I, my answer would be very different than yours. Think about it. I had a manager who, who was really bad at admin work. He was really good in everything else. He was a good technologist, he was a good people person, but he was really bad at admin. And on my first one-on-one -on -one with him, he made it clear to me that, hey, Rinal, I am bad at this. I can spend my time improving all this, or I can spend my time having good conversations with you on how can we make things better. And if, if you can collaborate with me, then maybe we could, we could compromise a bit on the admin side. You, perhaps you could help me out a bit, and we could work together. Think about it. Um, I'm starting to wind down uh, this presentation, and one of the things which comes to my mind is that if you are looking to aspire for leadership roles, there are people you will be coming, you'll, you'll, I mean, you'll be seeing who are pretty articulate in trying to you know, you know, explain the problem, talk about how big or how gnarly or how hairy, hairy that problem is. But then there are people who basically give you that confidence and say, yes, I'll get it done. Be that person. Anyone who runs the organization, I promise you, notices that. That confidence that, yes, I'll get it done. Likewise, I've also seen people who, who run after projects which are like the nice, plump projects, that this is a project with high visibility, I really want to be part of it. My advice to them would be like, don't worry too much about the size of the project and the visibility and the plump projects and so on. Whatever work is given to you, try your best to nail it. The more you can do that, the more you get observed, everyone gets that, that trust and confidence on you. If you're looking to move towards a leadership role, that trust and confidence from your senior leadership is really required. This conference has been amazing on, amazing on engineering culture. There have been so many people who talked about so many nice things. I was hoping to summarize all of it, but it's way too much talk. So what I could just say that I've used this talk to remind you that what some of these leadership roles look like, some, trip, some tips and tricks on how we could go around making things better. If we make that small improvement in being a better leader, we can make our teams a bit better. We can inspire other teams to follow and thus influence the broader engineering culture within an organization. Please make an effort to know what these leadership roles are like. Don't just jump for it for the heck of it. Go there with your eyes open. Prepare for these type of roles before you go for it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Haseeb, um, Natalie, and John, who helped uh, prepare me for this presentation. BNZ is a wonderful place wherein we could go in and ask people to help, and we get a lot of help and support from our peers and managers. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, NZ Tech Rally, for giving me this opportunity. We have just space for one question. <laughs> Do we have any? Yeah. Cool. You might be louder. Anyway. Hello. Does this work? Okay. I want to talk about the uncomfortable conversations because I, I've had to do this in my journey in leadership. Uh, you know, in a very uncomfortable conversation, I had to fire somebody, right? What's your strategy? What, what, what makes it easy to move into being able to have those conversations? So if I could paraphrase, your question was, difficult conversations is a thing. Unfortunately, you gave an example about you firing someone. And how is it easy or how can I go around preparing for it? Yeah, what's, your what's my strategy? So I talked about the, that aspect around genuinely caring for people. As a person who needs to have that conversation, I need to be prepared with the facts and the context on what's going on. Nothing is worse than going into those conversations without having a background context on why this person behaved or, or operated in a particular way. As long as I'm prepared in that conversation, as long as I understand what motivations drove that person to do a particular thing, I think I can have a more logical conversation. Uh, I have been I mean, when I was in a somewhat immature state from a leadership standpoint, I have waded into areas where I should not have, or I went into assumptions based upon my biases. Wrong idea. Be prepared. The more you prepare, the better you, could, you, are, you are equipped 
to have those conversations. All right, thank you, Bruno. Thank you.